Hello everybody, this is Jörg once again from YouTube channel Joggler66 and today we are going to continue reading in the book Babylon Mystery Religion. <clears throat> Something that occurred to me quite strange after reading the first chapter I really had to sit back for five minutes and laugh at myself. I was gonna read a book and I even couldn't get the title right because I always refer to it as Mystery Babylon Religion in the first chapter. When you didn't hear that, go back there and listen to that, you know. Whenever I studied these things, it's it's always been Mystery Babylon. It's uh, called Mystery Babylon in the Bible. It's Mystery Babylon called from Bill Cooper in his series on Mystery Babylon and so on and so on. I, I, I just screwed up, I have to admit, because the book is called Babylon Mystery Religion and not Mystery Babylon Religion. So this time we are going to read chapter 2 which is titled Mother and Child Worship and I try to get it right to always say Babylon Mystery Religion. Okay, listen up. I'm gonna start reading chapter 2 of Babylon Mystery Religion Mother and Child Worship. One of the most outstanding examples of how Babylonian S.U.N. sun worship has continued to our day may be seen in the way Mary worship replaced the ancient worship of the mother goddess. The story of the mother and child was widely known in ancient Babylon and developed into an established worship. Numerous monuments of Babylon show the goddess mother Semir Semiramis I can always pronounce the name without any problem <laughs> except this time. Numerous monuments of Babylon show the goddess mother Semiramis with her child Tammuz in her arms. When the people of Babylon were scattered to the various parts of the earth, they carried the worship of the Divine Mother and her child with them. This explains why many nations worshipped a mother and child, in one form or another, centuries even before the true Saviour Jesus Christ was born into this world. In the various countries where this worship spread, the mother and child were called by different names, for, we will recall, language was confused at Babel, you know, when God destroyed the Tower of Babel and founded the nations of the world. The Chinese had a mother goddess called Xing Mu, or the Holy Mother. She is pictured with child in arms and rays of glories around her head. The ancient Germans worshipped the Virgin Hertha, with her child in arms. The Scandinavians called her Deysa, who was also pictured with a child. The Etruscans called her Nutria, and among the Druids, the Virgo Petitura was worshipped as quote-unquote Mother of God. In India, she was known as Indrani, who was also represented with a child in arms. And you will see the picture in the video of that here. The mother goddess was known as Aphrodite or Ceres to the Greeks, Nana to the Sumerians, and as Venus or Fortuna to her devotees in the olden days of Rome, and her child as Jupiter. And where do we know Jupiter today from? Well, St. Peter's Basilica is a Jupiter temple. The capital in the United States of America in Washington is a temple of Jupiter. The child of Venus or Fortuna. In Asia, the mother was known as Sibylle and the child as Dioeus. But regardless of her name or place, says one writer, she was the wife of Baal, the virgin queen of heaven who bore fruit, although she never conceived. The accompanying picture that is above and shown in the video right here now shows the mother and child as Devaki and Krishna. For ages, Isai, the quote-unquote great goddess, and her child Iswara have been worshipped in India, where temples were erected for their worship. When the children of Israel fell into apostasy, they too were defiled with this mother goddess worship. As we read in Judges chapter 2, verse 13, quote, they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. Unquote. Ashtaroth, or Ashtoreth, was the name by which the goddess was known to the children of Israel. It is pitiful to think that those who had known the true God would depart from him and worship the heathen mother. 
yet this is exactly what they did and for that we go to uh, a few Bible uh, quotations that I give you right here where <coughs> excuse me <coughs> where they went exactly and left the God of the Bible and the God the Creator and went to pagan gods we can read that among others in Judges chapter 10 verse 6 quote and the children of Israel did evil again the sight of the Lord and served Baalim and Ashtaroth and the gods of Syria and the gods of Zidon and the gods of Moab and the gods of the children of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines and forsook the Lord and served not him unquote. and in first Samuel chapter 7 verse 3 we read and Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel saying if ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts then put away the strange gods and Astaroth from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines and in chapter 4 it reads then the children of Israel did put away Baalim and Ashtaroth and served the Lord only in 1st Samuel chapter 12 verse 10 we read quote, and they cried unto the Lord and said we have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and have saved Baalim and Ashtaroth but now deliver us out of the hands of our enemies and we will serve thee unquote. in 1st Kings chapter 11 verse 5 we read for Solomon went after Ashtoreth the goddess of the Zidonians and after Milcom, the abomination, the abomination of the Ammonites. Unquote. And finally, in the second book of Kings, chapter 23, verse 13, it reads, And the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon, the king of Israel, had built for Ashtoreth, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for the Chemosh, and the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. So there were quite a few <coughs> um, quotes that we can check. And of course these quotes come from the uncorrupted true word of God in the English language preserved today, the King James 1611 authorized version. The writer continues, one of the titles <clears throat> by which the goddess was known among them was the Queen of Heaven. And for that we can go to Jeremiah 14 verses 17 through 19. Quote, but we will certainly do whatever, whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our mouth, to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off <coughs> to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings to her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour our drinks uh, drink offerings unto her without our men? So far the chapter of Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah rebuked them for re worshipping her, but they rebelled against his warning. In Ephesus, the great mother was known as Diana. The temple dedicated to her in that city was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Not only at Ephesus, but throughout all Asia and the world was the goddess worshipped, as we can read in Acts chapter 19 verse 27. Quote, so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship it. Unquote. The author continues, in Egypt the mother was known as Isis and her child as Horus. 
it is very common for the religious monuments of Egypt to show the infant Horus seated on the lap of his mother. This false worship, having spread from Babylon to the various nations, in different names and forms, finally became established at Rome and throughout the Roman Empire. Says a noted writer, <coughs> says a noted writer concerning this period, quote, The worship of the Great Mother was very popular under the Roman Empire. Inscriptions prove that the two, mother and child, received divine honors, not only in Italy and especially at Rome, but also in the provinces, particularly Africa, Spain, Portugal, France, Germany and Bulgaria." Unquote. It was during this period, when the worship of the Divine Mother was very prominent, that the Saviour Jesus Christ founded the New Testament Church. What a glorious Church it was in those early days! By the 3rd and 4th century, however, what was known as the quote-unquote Church had in many ways departed from the original faith, falling into the apostasy about which the apostles had warned. You have to, uh, you have to remember here that Paul warned of falling away. A falling away that must come first and then be the man of sin revealed, as you probably re remember. I don't have the quote right here right now, but you can check your Bibles on that. When this quote-unquote falling away came, much S.U.N. sun worship was mixed with Christianity. Unconverted S.U.N. sun worshippers were taken into the professing church and in numerous instances were allowed to continue many of their S.U.N. sun worship rites and customs, usually with a few reservations or changes to make their belief appear more similar to Christian doctrine. One of the best examples of such a carryover from S.U.N. sun worship may be seen in the way the worship of the Great Mother continued, only in a slightly different form and with a new name. You see, many S.U.N. sun worshippers had been drawn to Christianity, but so strong was their adoration for the Mother Goddess, they did not want to forsake her. Compromising church leaders saw that if they could find some similarity in Christianity with the worship of the Mother Goddess, they could greatly increase their numbers. But who would replace the Great Mother of Sun Worship? Well, Mary. Mary, of course, was the most logical person for them to choose. Why couldn't they allow the people to continue their prayers and devotion to a Mother Goddess only call her by the name of Mary. Apparently this was the reasoning employed, for this is exactly what happened. Little by little the sun worship had been associated with the S.U.N. sun worship. Mother, uh, mother was, transferred to, uh, was transferred to Mary. But Mary worship was no part of the original Christian faith. Well, I'm going to repeat the sentence. Very important. Mary worship was no part of the original Christian faith. It is evident that Mary was a fine, dedicated and godly woman, especially chosen to bear the body of our Savior. Yet none of the apostles or Jesus himself ever hinted at the idea of Mary worship. As the Encyclopedia Britannica states, during the first centuries of the Church, no emphasis was placed upon Mary whatsoever. This point is admitted by the Catholic Encyclopedia also. Quote, Devotion to our Blessed Lady in its ultimate analysis must be regarded as a practical application of the doctrine of the communion of saints. Seeing that this doctrine is not contained, at least explicitly, in the earlier forms of the Apostles' Creed, there is perhaps no ground for surprise if we do not meet with any clear traces of the, cults, uh, of the cultus of the Blessed Virgin in the first Christian centuries." Unquote. The worship of Mary being a later development. 
And what does that tell you about the Vatican, about the Roman Catholic Church today, who worship Mary wherever they can, and she is the mother of God? That wasn't found according even to the Catholic Encyclopedia in the first Christian centuries. So, here's my question to you. When the Roman Catholic Church states that she has her authority from Peter, an apostle of Christ, and is the absolute continuation of the first church that Jesus built in his grassroots ministry when he was walking the earth for three and a half years in his ministry, How come that even the Catholic Encyclopedia says that it was no surprise if we do not meet with any clear traces of the cultus of the Blessed Virgin in the first Christian centuries? Well, I can tell you what that is. It's because Rome is lying. Rome is lying. And the, bill, the, the church of Rome was never built on Peter. And Peter was never in Rome. And the statue of Peter that you see today in the Vatican and St. Peter's Basilica is not Peter. It is a statue of Jupiter that has been renamed and has been baptized into Christianity. Where the pagan Roman Empire baptized itself with the garments of Christianity. It is a false religion. And therefore, like in Revelation 18, verse 4, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. Come out of her, my people. That and every church associated with her worldwide, Buddhists, Hindus, Islam, of course, all the false and infiltrated and apostate so-called protestant churches today all these religions are all one come out of her my people that's my message for you that i find very important to make in the second chapter of the book babylon mystery religion the author continues it was not until the time of Constantine, the early part of the 4th century, that anyone began to look at Mary as the goddess. Even at this period such worship was frowned upon, as is evident by the words of Epipanius, who denounced certain, uh, certain ones of Thrace, Arabia and elsewhere, for worshipping Mary as a goddess and offering cakes at her shrine. She should be held in honour, he said. But let no one adore Mary. Yet, within just a few more years, Mary worship was not only condoned, but became an official doctrine at the Council of Ephesus in 431 AD. At Ephesus, you ask? It was in this city that Diana had been worshipped as the goddess of virginity and motherhood from primitive times. She was said to represent the generative powers of nature, and so was pictured with many breasts. A tower-shaped crown, a symbol of the Tower of Babel, adorned her head. When beliefs are held by a people for centuries, they are not easily forsaken. Well, I have to add here, when beliefs are held by people for centuries, that is called tradition. And the whole Roman Catholic Church system is built on tradition. Come out of her, my people. So church leaders at Ephesus, as the falling away came, also reasoned that if people would be allowed to hold their ideas about a mother goddess, if this could be mixed into Christianity and the name Mary substituted, they could gain more converts. But this was not God's method. 
when Paul had come to Ephesus in earlier days, no compromise was made with S.U.N. sun worship. People were truly converted and destroyed their idols of the goddess. And we can read that in Acts chapter 19 verses 24 through 27. Quote, For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines for Diana, bought, uh, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshippeth. Unquote whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. What is the world worship of today? As we can read in Revelation, and the whole world wandered after the beast. And isn't the beast a woman, a church riding that beast? And doesn't that church put Mary up on a pedestal and chose Jesus as a baby, as an infant? Isn't this blasphemy in the highest? Just a question for you to think about. Continue. How tragic that the church at Ephesus in later centuries compromised and adopted a form of a mother goddess worship, the Council of Ephesus finally making it an official doctrine the SUN sun worship influence in this decision seems apparent. A further indication that Mary worship developed out of the old worship of the mother goddess may be seen in the titles that are ascribed to her. Mary is often called the Madonna. According to Hislop, and remind you, Hislop, we are talking about the author of the book The Two Babylons. And I forgot to tell you the title when reading chapter 1, so we come back here and uh, you see, <laughs> we all learn, don't we? That's all to me. So Alexander Hislop, I didn't know which book he wrote, and it was The Two Babylons. I think I put the right picture in the video at that time, but I'll probably do that here. And uh, if you're interested in reading Alexander Hislop and the book The Two Babylons, you can get that book online even as a PDF for free. I checked that uh, and I, I, I got it myself, so you can get it also. Okay, the author says, according to Hislop, this expression is the translation of one of the titles by which the Babylonian goddesses was known. In deified form, Nimrod came to be known as Baal. The title of his wife, the female divinity, would be the equivalent of Baal T. In English, this word means my lady. In Latin, mia domina. And in Italian, it is corrupted into the well known Madonna. Now, <laughs> I can't, I just can't say the word Madonna reading Babylon mystery religion and not going a little bit in. This is what's coming next. Why do you think that quote unquote singer, the mother of the Illuminati music industry, is called Madonna? And if anyway you listen to her songs, like for example Papa Don't Preach, and a lot of songs after that, listen to the text. They reveal the pagan meaning of those songs. And don't even get me started here on the music industry, which is completely run by Satanists and Luciferians through papal night orders like the, uh, le, the Sovereign Military Order of Malta, S-M-O-M. And I made a very interesting video that you can look up in the series Nothing But The Truth 
on the power of the sovereign military order of Malta that it really weighs in this world and that is hidden from the plain sight of most people. If you don't know it already, watch the series They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll and also the documentary Rock and Roll Sorcerers of the New Age Revolution. The latter is mentioned in my video of Inquisition Update interview with Chris Pinto, where Chris Pinto explaining how he woke up to the music industry and what it is all about. And uh, of course I mentioned Chris Pinto here. Uh, go to my channel Juggler66 and you will find the video Inquisition Update interview with Chris Pinto. Very interesting video and I mentioned Chris Pinto also in a few other broadcasts because he did a very interesting documentary called The Hidden Faith of Our Father, Founding Fathers. And I just got on the phone with Walt before I made this reading <laughs> to tell you Chris Pinto made this documentary three hours long, The Hidden Face of the Founding Fathers, and he sublimely, sublimely took his ship away from every iceberg that could hit him. Walt and I agree that it is certainly no more than one or maximum two sentences in this whole three hour documentary that Chris Pinto mentions the Carroll family, John, Charles and Daniel. And when you follow Hour of the Truth a little bit for the latest time, you know how important, and of course my reading of Rulers of Evil from Tapa Saucy, how important the Carroll family was in founding the United States of America and in putting up the Constitution which is not a protestant document, but is a Roman Catholic document. The only thing slightly protestant is the Bill of Rights. And that, my dear friends, is done away with in the latest years with the Patriot Act at first, and the National Defense and Authorization Act at the second, and last but not least, all the executive orders written by George W. Bush and his successor, Barack Hussein Obama, who rules the United States of America not through Congress, but through executive orders, cutting out your civil rights piece by piece by piece by piece. And you know, when the day comes and they will implement all those executive orders to the full scale, then a lot of people will all of a sudden wake up. And a lot of other people will also wake up and will finally see that the founding of the United States of America with the Constitution was another counter-reformation action by the Roman Catholic Church to give this new founded nation from the beginning a Roman Catholic government. And you can go back to our broadcast that we did on that on George Washington and how he even on his deathbed converted to Catholicism. He was not a Baptist, he was not a Protestant, he was at least a secret Romanist. And Chris Pinto doesn't speak of the real hidden faith of the Founding Fathers, that was Romanism. He speaks about the occult, he speaks about Freemasonry, he speaks about Luciferianism, Satanism, but he does not speak of Romanism. And that's what it is. So please call a spade a spade. The hidden face of the Founding Fathers was Romanism from the beginning. But okay, I don't want to go too far into that right now. Just remind you, for the music industry, there's a very 
uh, interesting documentary up there. They sold their souls for rock and roll. I think that is from Good Fight Ministries is the channel. And uh, this one documentary that Chris Pinto mentions in the interview with Inquisition Update with Tom Fress, uh, Rock and Roll Sorcerers of the New Age Revolution. Look that up for yourself. You don't have to believe me what I'm reading. You don't have to believe with, uh, this author. You don't have to believe me. Do your own research. But instead of making an ignorant comment on this video, on the things that I say, first do your research and maybe use a little of that material that I provide you with by reading this book and explaining this book to you. Madonna. The Illuminati mother of music. And by the way, who are behind the Illuminati? That's right. The Society of Jesus. The Jesuits. They founded the Illuminati and they used them when they blew them up in the, what was it, uh, 1780s the Bavarian Illuminati, when they blew them up out in the open, that is Jesuitical policy called blowing cover by cover. Look it up for yourselves. Do your own studies. It's so interesting and revealing. Okay, the author continues on the bottom of page 12. Among the Phoenicians, the mother goddess was known as the Lady of the Sea, and even this title is applied to Mary, though there is no connection between Mary and the sea. The scriptures make it plain that there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, as we can read in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. There is one mediator between God and man the man Christ Jesus. Yet Roman Catholicism teaches that Mary also is a mediator. Prayers to her from an, uh, form an important part of Catholic, Roman Catholic worship. There is no scriptural basis for this idea, yet this concept was not foreign to the ideas linked with the Mother Goddess. She bore as one of her names Mylitta, that is, the Mediatrix, or Mediator. Mary is often called the Queen of Heaven. But Mary, the mother of Jesus, is not the Queen of Heaven. Quote, the Queen of Heaven, unquote, was a title of the Mother Goddess that was worshipped centuries before Mary was ever born. Clear back in the days of Jeremiah, the people were worshipping the Queen of Heaven and practicing rites that were sacred to her, as we read in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18 through 20. Quote, the children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drinks offering unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger? says the Lord. Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast, and upon trees of the field and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Unquote. One of the titles by which Isis was known, was the Mother of God. Later, this same title was applied to Mary by the theologians of Alexandria. Mary was, of course, the Mother of Jesus, but only in the sense of his human nature, his humanity. The original meaning of Mother of God went far beyond this. It attached a glorified position to the Mother, and in much the same way, Roman Catholics have been taught to think of Mary. Well, let nobody teach you how to think of Mary or of Jesus, but the Word of God, the Bible itself, the right and true Bible, the only one, the King James Bible, I tell you. 
so firmly written in the S.U.N. sun-worship mind was the image of the mother goddess with child in her arms, that when the days of the falling away came, according to one writer, the ancient portrait of Isis and the child Horus was ultimately accepted not only in popular opinion, but by formal episcopal sanction as the portrait of the virgin and her child. Representations of Isis and her child were often enclosed in a framework of flowers. This practice too was applied to Mary, as those who have studied medieval art well know. Astarte, the Phoenician goddess of fertility, was associated with the crescent moon, as seen on an old medal, and you will see that picture right coming up here in the video now. The Egyptian goddess of fertility, Isis, was represented as standing on the crescent moon with stars surrounding her head. In Roman Catholic churches all over Europe may be seen pictures of Mary exactly the same way. And I'm going to put the picture in the video right here, and you can see it for yourself. In numerous ways, leaders of the falling away attempted to make Mary appear similar to the goddess of S.U.N. sun worship and exalt her to a divine plane. Even as the S.U.N. sun worshippers had statues of the goddess, so statues were made of Mary. It is said that in some cases, the very same statues that had been worshipped as Isis with a child were simply renamed as Mary and the Christ child. When Christianity triumphed, says one writer, these paintings and figures became those of the Madonna and child without any break in continuity. No archaeologist, in fact, can now tell whether some of these objects represent the one or the other. Unquote from the author. Many of these renamed figures were crowned and adorned with jewels in exactly the same way as the images of the Hindu and Egyptian virgins. But Mary, the mother of Jesus, was not rich, as we can read in Luke 2.24 and in Leviticus 12, verse 8. Luke 2, verse 24, but we also need to read the verses 22 and 23 to understand the whole context, so I'm giving you Luke Chapter 2, verse 22 through 24. Quote, and when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him into Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is set in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. End quote from Luke. And we go over to Leviticus 12, verse 8, and now you understand why Mary was not rich. Quote, And if she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles, or two young pigeons, the one for the burnt offering and the other for a sin offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for her, and she shall be clean." Unquote. Now, if Mary was rich, would she have brought two turtle doves? What do you think? The author continues, from where then did these jewels and crown come that are seen on the statues? <laughs> Interesting question. The answer is by compromises. That is what the Roman Catholic Church all is about. That everybody has to make compromises to belong to her. Because if you do not compromise the truths that you have maybe in you, you will never be part of the Roman Catholic Church that is built upon lies and lies and lies and deceit. You have to compromise. Christians had to compromise their faith to go according to the pagan system which Rome still is. 
even though it wears on the outside the garments of Christianity. Don't you ever think that one real true Christian is in the Roman Catholic Church. They are all betrayed, lied to, because they are too stubborn and too lazy to do their own research. To go to the Bible, to the Word of God that explains himself and makes it clear. There is no compromise between white and black, between true and lie. Because every compromise takes away the shining light of the white and makes it grey. The author continues, by compromises, some very obvious, others more hidden, the worship of the ancient mother continued within the church of the falling away, with the name of Mary being substituted in places in the place of older names. Ah, and that continues on the bottom of page 14 already, chapter 2 of Babylon Mystery Religion. I don't know about you, I very, very much enjoyed this reading and I can't wait to continue. But, you know, so much, so many things to do. Anyway, it is called Babylon Mystery Religion, not Mystery Babylon. I apologize for that mistake I made. Thank you for listening. Please do your own research. Get this book and other books for yourself. Study your Bible. Read Romanism and the Reformation by Henry Gretton Guinness. And you will see how all the lies all of a sudden appear as black spots right before your eyes. So when you want a clear sight, get rid of the black spots and you can see the truth. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, take good care. God bless you and bye-bye.